Reincarnation mistake. Heavenly winds rushed through his long, fluttering hair as he descended onto the Paramount God Palace, his workplace with all the heavenly screens installed. He was known for his handsome and smiley face, but today, his demeanor had turned vile. His sky blue, silky clothes, imported from the godly Silk Palace a few days back, prickled his skin, and he itched to get out of the filthy clothes. That was a terrible choice of clothes. As he descended onto the top platform that housed the Seven Divine Juncture Lotus, the usual tranquil wind swirled into a whirlpool of fierce north winds. My lord, why are you in a foul mood today? This lowly servant doesn't dare to ask, but concern forces me to ask about your bad disposition. Shut up, Shrug. I'm in a particularly vile mood today. Experiment T-2459's timeline is screwed because of a bad girl, and I've got to send everyone back two hundred years. My lord, if you move the time law back, well, it will impact your date with Dao Princess Redonna tonight. Hmm. What if I destroy T-2459? Now, there are just six universes. Yes, let's do that. His face broke into an ear-to-ear -ear smile. It was just an experiment that had run for 50,000 years. It wasn't something precious like a date with Dao Princess Ridana. My lord, uh, let this lowly servant carry the task out for you. I can't manipulate time laws, but I can destroy an experiment easily. Uh, just make sure no reincarnations are ongoing through Hell's Granny Wheel. That can cause trouble. The lowly servant bowed with utmost sincerity, and the Lord felt a surge of happiness. As his mood changed, fierce winds that had plagued the area turned into docile sheep and started nourishing the plants, and his servant breathed a sigh of relief. Ten minutes later, his servant sprinted into Heavenly Dao Palace, where all the experiment nuclei were stored. Finding T-2459 wasn't a tough job. Destruction was always easier than creation. As easy as destroying a measly god from a universe. Dao Destruction Azure energy flew out of his palm and wiped out all six universes included in the T-2459 nucleus. <laughs> that was easy, he chuckled as the universes folded into themselves and the nucleus collapsed. Wait! No! An awful premonition occupied his heart. He had forgotten something important. Hell's granny wheel. He'd forgotten to check that. It was the second thing on the list of things out of his control, beyond his capabilities to interfere with. Even his master couldn't do it. Dow energy interface. Condense. A thin film of azure energy formed in front of him, listing all the reincarnations going around the whole experiment nucleus. Oh, in the name of Holy Tao, what a blasphemy have I done! Ten names appeared on the list, and one of them belonged to Nucleus T-2459. It was a pest named Li Wei. He was a low-level wastrel that had lived for two hundred years and died at the hands of a girl. He was in the reincarnation cycle and out of the T-2459 Nucleus. Where should he put that pest now? The lowly servant couldn't think of a solution, so he looked around to find someone dying right at that moment. There was one Li Wei that had died a few minutes before in T-120. Without thinking, he transferred Li Wei's soul into the already dead Li Wei. Clicking on the Tao Energy interface, he quickly accessed Nucleus T-120. The old Li Wei had died from a nanobot attack, and his brain was fried. But it was just a brain. Fixing it wasn't an issue. Another azure energy streak flew out of his palm, and the already dead Li Wei recovered 30% of his brain. Enough to survive. And then, dead Li Wei opened his eyes. Ah, <sighs> done. The lowly servant sighed, cold sweat breaking out under his dark blue robe. 
error. The error of reincarnation doesn't match. An error popped on the Dao energy interface, and Li Wei's soul flew out of the old Li Wei that he had just restored. Holy Dao, what should I do now? The lowly servant sweated profusely. It was insane, and he didn't know what to do now. Searching for another suitable era. A new line popped up on the Dao energy interface. Nucleus T2460 found. Same era found. T2459 Li Wei is dying right now. Do you want to transfer T2459 Li Wei's soul to T2460 Li Wei? Yes, please, the lowly servant shouted and watched a sixteen-year-old boy getting up in the backyard of a small house. The era looked the same, and the boy looked fine. Holy Dao, this has settled. The lowly servant closed the Dao energy interface and moved out of Heavenly Dao Palace. By rushing out quickly, he forgot to check Li Wei's current soul condition. He didn't realize the soul had moved with the Nucleus T2459 consciousness and had encountered a foreign object in Nucleus T120. Alive? Li Wei opened his eyes, taking in the shabby roof above his head. Fist-sized holes riddled it like someone had practiced a fist martial art on the roof. It looked exactly like his own childhood room, and he could even see the bright sun shining in the fair blue sky through the holes. Pain crept under his skin as his senses became clear. Under his bare back, stones pricked his skin. Something wet and sticky flew over his chest, but he couldn't lift his hand to wipe it clean. Trying to lift his hand sent a bout of pain through his head and very core. The pain, it shocked him fully awake, and he realized he was in a small room that looked like his own room two hundred years ago. The ten-by-ten-foot room had nothing but a small black ceramic pot that stored water and a bedroll made up of his old clothes. Surprisingly, the room had dust scattered over each and everything, other than a beautiful female's painting that hung on a wall. That was the only painting of his mother that he had, and he always cleaned it and nothing else. Was he in a dream? He must be. It had been two hundred years, and he still remembered this room vividly. His days of eating dog shit were spent in this room, at the back of his father's courtyard, before he ran away. He still regretted not taking that painting with him. For many years, he'd thought of coming back to look for the painting, but he never got the chance. Because of his circumstances, by the time he came back to Old Marshall City, the Lee clan had vanished from the state of Zin. Completely. Yes, this had to be a dream, a dream coming to him a moment before his death. So the bitch succeeded in killing him. All his life, he'd loved her, but in the end, she'd killed him like a slaughterer killing a chicken. These must be memories coming back to him before his last breath. But why would he remember this shitty place instead of the many beautiful memories he'd made later in his lifetime? Why would his death trigger this particular memory? And this pain? Shit, it felt like his entire body was being torn apart by something and he was losing all his blood. The metallic taste in his mouth and the smell of his own blood confirmed he was bleeding. Lifting a small mirror at arm's length, he looked in it. Two bright blue eyes accompanied by a plump youth's face stared back at him. Blue eyes? How could it be true? After practicing fire-type body cultivation, his eye color had changed to red. Quickly, he checked his right shoulder and it had an old scar. Was it a dream? Even if he dreamed about his young days, why was he bleeding everywhere? He'd never bled like this in his room. One time, Chang Wu beat him half dead, but it wasn't this bad. A warm breeze rushed through the holes in the rooftop, covering his bare body and providing him the tranquil feeling he needed right now. Through a hole, 
he spotted the azure dragon tree that towered above his small room. His childhood was spent around that tree. As far back as he could remember, he had never seen his mother. Later, he learned she had died when he was one year old. After her death, his stepfather had hated him and married another woman. From his earliest memories, he'd always spent time near this tree. Well, Lee clan members used to call it Big Piper Tree. After spending 100 years in the sect, he saw this precious tree again, growing in the herbal garden of senior brother Jiang Jai. One day, senior brother Jiang told him about the usefulness of this tree while drinking seven herb immortal tea below the vast expanse of the tree. That tree was awesome, and he could still feel the sweet taste lingering on the back of his tongue. Too bad no one had known how rare this tree was. These tree leaves could be sold to a sect for a lot of money. Seeing the tree leaves once again, he remembered little Fay, who always ran around him. After leaving this place, he never went back. Maybe he should have, just for the sake of little Fay, who always looked after a wastrel like him. He should have come back. Regret ran deeper in his heart than he thought. Otherwise, why would he see this scene before his last breath? A sweet smell suddenly covered his senses, giving him much-needed calmness. It even reduced the immense pain he felt for a moment. Young master, I'm back. A tiny girl's beautiful face appeared before his eyes. She had two big blue eyes and a dimple on her right cheek. She wore a long maroon robe that wrapped around her small fifteen-year-old body. She carried a bowl bigger than her waist, and it exuded a medicinal smell. By the smell, he guessed it was the regenerative powder that every second store sold in Old Marshall City. She was Kifei, his servant, the only other person that spoke nicely to him in the Lee clan compound other than Li Chi, his stepsister. He sighed. Regret slipped through his meridians. He should have come back to check on her before the Lee clan vanished from the city. For a mortal like her, living sixty years was tough. With his status in the sect, he could have helped her to live another hundred years at least. Fair, I'm sorry I ignored you. I wish I had acted differently. But a dead person can't regret or cry, can he? A lone tear escaped from his eyes. The girl dropped on her knees and clasped his mouth. Young master, please don't speak like this. Fair will die if you talk like this. Sob after sob slipped out of her mouth, but then she halted. Her eyes turned to steel before she started wiping his bare chest with the liquid she'd brought in the small ceramic pot. Wait for me to reach Layer 2 Refinement Realm, and I'll teach those bastards a lesson. Her soft hand brushed against his chest, and he could feel the low-level regenerative liquid entering his veins and a smooth feeling spreading through his body. But how could this dream be so vivid? Was it really a dream? Then there was another issue. Fair was talking about Refinement Realm, why was she talking about cultivation? Her spirit root was damaged when she was a child, so she couldn't cultivate. What a strange dream. But before he could say anything, a formless aura swept through the room followed by his stepfather, Lisua, entering through the small door. You wastrel! You even got beaten by a layer one refinement realm trash! I truly despise you! A formless attack assaulted Li Wei, and he lost his consciousness. But he couldn't confirm if it was a dream or not. Dream or Reincarnation Dripping water woke Li Wei from a bizarre dream. A shiver passed through his mind when he recalled it. In the dream, He'd faced a strange, inconceivable artifact that could talk in his head. It was called an AI chip. 
when he opened his eyes on a battlefield littered with other strange metal artifacts, the AI had spoken in his head, telling him some weird information like his injury condition, life percentage, and whatnot. Before he could react, another strange thing happened. An azure light broke from the skies and pulled him away. A cold water droplet fell on his eyelid, shaking him awake. A tiny hole in the roof was placed right above his face, and it was raining outside, enveloping the room in the unique, tranquil fragrance of soil. He used to live in a country covered by year-round rainstorms, so this smell wasn't something unknown. In fact, he'd missed it after running away from his home. And having a room with a roof full of holes, he'd practically lived in the rain. Wait, wasn't this a dream before him dying? Why was he back in the same dream again? And was this a different part of it? No, something was amiss. The rain, the cold air slapping his face and this unique fragrance. How could he experience this all over again? Then there was the pain of a rough surface below his back, and now a gray robe covering his body. Who had put a robe on his body? His stepfather? No way. He tried to move his head, but a lingering pain opposed him. If this was a dream, this pain wasn't possible. What was going on? Had he reincarnated into his old self? How was that even possible? Of course, reincarnation was possible. A decade ago, he had even met a reincarnated beauty in his sect. She was as cold as ice, and other disciples called her Ice Queen behind her back. But she'd started as a baby and later gained her memories. However, the reincarnation he knew of required one to be born in a new body, not go back to one's old self. Time manipulation wasn't possible in his world. What the heck is happening? He whispered, and in agony he raised his hand to slap himself awake. Suddenly he realized he could move his hand, albeit with lots of pain. He wasn't crippled like it had felt previously. Even his injuries seemed a little bit better. Using his divine sense, he probed his physical condition. A sharp pain shot into his mind when his divine sense spread through his body, but ignoring that, he went ahead with probing. Five feet, ten inches. Youthful appearance. Sharp nose, square jaw, and fat protruding out from everywhere humanly possible. He was sixteen years old again, and his bone age confirmed it. If this was reincarnation, then he was back at his sixteen-year-old self. Strange. Ice Queen had only evoked her memories after she reached a certain martial realm, and she'd remembered her past life that occurred a hundred and fifty years ago. Strangely, he had traveled into his past, and with all his future memories and divine sense intact. Damn! That meant his Donchien. He quickly poured his divine sense into his Donchien. Although he couldn't inspect it like he could his other body parts, he felt chi leaking through it, a small, leaky Donchien. So he couldn't cultivate. He couldn't even reach layer one refinement realm with this Donchien. He had to fix his Donchien and find a Donchien strengthening fruit to expand its size. If he compared it with his old life, this was the same. If he wanted to walk on the same path he'd previously walked, he would have to wait two more months for his fortuitous encounter with senior sister Wang Zia. But he would not dare, nor would he accept it. That bitch had killed him in the end. Hatred blew in his head when he thought about that bitch. She was his life. When he lay in the depths of a crevice, waiting for ferocious beasts to eat him, she'd arrived like an angel. Lifting him up from the depths of despair, she'd given him a way to walk forward, 
With her help, he'd transcended cultivation realm after realm, only to die at her hands in the end. Hatred rode through his meridians, pushing him to the brink of madness. If only he hadn't met her, he would be dead. Well, he couldn't blame her for helping in the first place. But then why did she kill him in the end? Calm down, Wei. Taking a deep breath, he controlled his emotions. Being an array master, he knew patience. Once, he'd had to spend ten years in a puny place to carve an array to get out of a secret realm. Comparing this to that, this was nothing. Anyway, that was then, and this was now. Somehow, he had another chance at his own life, and that too with his memories intact. His lips moved, spreading in a wide smile. With all his memories intact, he was almost an array master. He could direct his life again from the start. This time, he would change his destiny. For the better, he would become a lazy immortal in this life. What should he do next? When senior sister Zia found him, he was a wastrel beggar and whatnot. He'd lain in the bottom of the deep crevice waiting to get eaten by a ferocious beast. But he didn't die. Two beautiful gray eyes had saved him and looked at him with amusement. It was senior sister Zia that carved a three-beast ceiling array in his leaking dantian and repaired it. She'd also given him a cultivation method for his attributeless chi— Three-vein metal chi art. It was a mid-level cultivation art, and with that art, he'd cultivated quicker and soon joined a mortal sect. In the end, he'd even had time to join Senior Sister Zia's sect, Firmament Sect. If he wanted to run on the same track again, he would be called a dog by the heavens. This time, he would choose his own path. First thing first, he had to fix his leaking Danqian. But where would he find another array master to carve a high-level array like three-beast ceiling array in his Danqian? This state of Zin had no array master. And even if he found one, why would an array master carve an array for him? And even if he somehow convinced an array master to help him, would he or she carve an array on his Danqian? No, they would think it's suicide. Even senior sister Zia wasn't sure at first, and asked him to think one hundred times before agreeing to it. That time he was desperate enough to not die, so he'd agreed. If he wanted to cultivate, he had to carve an array into his Danchien himself. With his divine sense, he could carve the five-direction ceiling soul array that he had learned in his previous life. It required one to have strong, divine sense and soul power, and he had both. Excited, he poured his divine sense into his Danqian and tried to check the leaky part, but a headache overtook him, and he was quickly thrown out of his Danqian. Something was wrong with his divine sense, and his gut told him not to use it unless he needed it badly. He would need to reach Layer 1 Foundation Realm to stabilize his current divine sense. Right now, he could only gauge its condition, couldn't pinpoint its location. His stronger divine sense wasn't useful until he broke through a whole realm. There was another issue. His current body might not withstand the overbearing method of array carving on the walls of his Danqian. Sister Wang Zia had used a different method— but he didn't want to go with that low-quality method again. So, carving an array he wanted would be nothing but suicide. Depression hit him. Was he going to end up a wastrel, even after gaining a reincarnation advantage? Would he have to run away and wait to meet with senior sister Zia? No way. He would die rather than meet her again. This time... He would ignore her and become a lazy immortal. Blood Essence Body Cultivation Art Someone entered his room 
disturbing Li Wei's thought process. The six-foot-tall boorish figure bending his way through the five-foot-tall open frame door wasn't Fayer, but his stepfather. It was pitch dark and cold, but in the flickering candlelight he spotted his father's rage-filled eyes. His long fingers held a leather whip, and Wei knew what was coming for him. Wei looked around, longing to avoid the upcoming beating, but with his tattered body, he couldn't move from the ragged bedroll he slept on. Even moving slightly on the rough cloth made him feel like someone scrubbed a mountaintop with his bare body. It left a bitter taste in his mouth because it was similar to the body cultivation art he'd practiced in his previous life. Cold wind rushed through the open door. It was broken the last time his stepfather had smashed it in rage. Ever since, when it rained, he'd faced the assault of cold wind and mad rain. When his father bent down over his fragile body, he looked like nothing less than a demon looming over its prey. Wei's first memory of this man was when he'd beaten Wei's ass red for some miserly reason, and it sent shrills through his soul. Li Sua was an arrogant asshole, and Wei hated him through and through. It might seem an extreme opinion for a stepfather, but he wouldn't bother trying any more. After Wei's mother died, Li Sua had completely ignored him, marrying more concubines and making children with them. He not only ignored Wei, but beat him at every possible occasion. Please forgive this Wei for not being able to properly greet, Father, Wei spoke first, clutching the ragged bedroll with his fingers. The man least deserved respect from him, but he didn't want to add fuel to the fire. The old him was a stubborn fool and always went against his stepfather, receiving beating after beating. But no more. On this new path, he had to tread carefully and enjoy his life. You can already talk, Li Sua replied, his eyes red. His quivering hand betrayed his intention to beat Wei. Lashing out with his leather whip, he attacked Wei's abdomen. Wei cried out in pain. That bastard treated him like a dog. But Li Sua was still Wei's father, and that's why he'd never gone back to the state of Zin, because he feared he would kill Li Sua at first sight. Another attack landed, and his soul almost jumped out of his mouth. Father, Wei shouted in pain. His body was still recovering from the beating he'd received from Kang Tan, and now his stepfather was adding to it. Blood spurted from his body whenever the whip touched him, and soon his gray robe turned into shredded rags stained red. Why did you come back alive, Wastrel? If you've got to fight, why didn't you die instead of bringing shame to my Lee clan? Li Sua's whip moved like a snake, biting Wei in various places. I have a foundation reforming pill, father, Wei somehow shouted, and suddenly the whip stopped an inch short of him. What did you say? Li Sua's face flushed red. He definitely wanted to continue, but he stopped, as Wei had told him something precious. Li Sua had been stuck at layer two of Qi Foundation Realm for years, and without a costly pill, he couldn't advance. In the state of Zin, alchemists were rare, and every pill cost a huge amount of gold coins. Being a measly elder of the Li family didn't provide many resources to Li Sua, and he could only bitterly try to absorb heaven and earth's energy to reach the next level. But with the poor heaven and earth essence levels of the state of Zin, it was nearly impossible to advance through cultivation levels without a pill. I've got a foundation reforming pill. That's what I fought with Kang Tan for. This little one had only one thought. To get it for you. With my blood. I found it for you, father. Li Sua bent down, his face flashing with delight. Where? Tell me, where is the pill? Give it to me now. Wei snickered in his mind. This bastard changed his colors faster than a chameleon. In Wei's whole sixteen years, he'd never called him Wei Er, and now he was trying to get cozy. How presumptuous. But what could he do? 
Wei sighed in his heart. This was a pill he had gotten his hands on a couple years back and saved for himself, but now he had to give it to his stepfather. This pill was his ticket to finding a peaceful month so he could cultivate peacefully. Otherwise, this man might beat him to death. In his current condition, any more injuries might push him to death. Damn this body. He hated it right now. If only he could cultivate. Father, it's in the right corner of the room, under the ceramic pot. He coughed, spitting blood. He had many injuries, but that barely fulfilled the requirements to cultivate blood essence body cultivation art. After waking up in his sixteen-year-old self, he had thought this through. Every cultivator had two paths of cultivation, chi cultivation and body cultivation. In the state of Zin, only a few knew about body cultivation, but outside of it, many people walked on this path. Chi cultivation used heaven and earth essence energy and converted it into chi that could be stored in one's danqian. Body cultivation didn't convert essence energy. Instead, it stored it inside one's flesh. While chi cultivation depended on one's spirit root attribute, body cultivation solely depended on one's physical root. It was a mysterious organ present in one's body that determined the person's cultivation, talent, and aptitude. Well, he had a flop there as well. He had a bronze-grade spirit root and earth-grade physical root. Everything in this world was divided into grades. Bronze, silver, gold, earth, human, and heaven. Bronze was the lowest grade, and heaven was the top grade. In the mortal world, silver-grade root was of paramount importance, and even in the firmament sect that ruled over the mortal world, earth-grade root was a rare sight. Because he had an earth-grade physical root, senior sister Zia had taken a fancy to him. Unfortunately, his earth-grade physical root was of the lowest quality, so he couldn't cultivate firmament fire-body cultivation art to the higher realms. That wasn't important— the art was tyrannical and required one to constantly temper their body with fire, and he hated getting burned. After a day's session, he would have blisters all over his body, and everyone would treat him with disgust. But in this new life, he wouldn't cultivate firmament fire body cultivation art. Instead, he would cultivate blood essence body cultivation art. He had found it in the secret realm where he was trapped for ten years. He didn't know the grade of the art, but it was absolutely above gold grade. So he wanted to cultivate it. But he couldn't before, because he had already cultivated another art. But in this life, he could. And he remembered the steps and incantations to reach the first few realms of cultivation with blood essence body cultivation art. It was just that he needed to drink the blood of other people. Sneak Attack Li Jia sneered at Li Tang's proposition. In the darkness, he was trying to hide his devilish smile. That older brother of his was trying to push him, the mightiest son of Li Clan's patriarch, to a lowly branch city. Did he think Li Jia had just come out of his mother's womb? Senor brother, just because you're an eldest son doesn't allow you to rule over others. The patriarch position is yet to be decided, and I've already reached layer four of Foundation Realm, while you've been stuck at layer five for many years. Li Jia refuted his senior brother's idea of stationing him in this city. The patriarch wasn't pleased with the current elder, Li Sua, and his way of ruling. So he had sent the three of them to reprime Li Sua and decide on the next actions. Jia Er, you don't know the might of the heavens. Until you reach layer five, you're beneath me, Li Tang replied in a stern tone. Li Jia snorted in his heart. 
Wait until the heavenly firmament sect opened their recruitment for outer sect disciples. Once he was admitted into the sect, he would definitely get his hands on the foundation reforming pill and reach layer five quickly. With his talent, he might even get another pill and reach layer six soon after. That would put him in line with their father, Li Shua. He might even become the next patriarch. An intense smell rushed through his nose and enthralled his senses. A foundation reforming pill. Someone has taken out a foundation reforming pill. The youngest son, Li Ti, spoke. He had been trifling with pills for some years, and he was said to have some knowledge about them. Even Li Jia recognized the fragrance. He had seen a foundation reforming pill in the clan treasury by accident. Their father treated it like a profound artifact. How could he forget the way his father had beat him after he touched that pill? Let's see who's in possession of the clan treasure, Li Tang said in a calm voice, but even the darkness couldn't hide the greed in his eyes. Yes, Li Jia quickened his pace. He had to get his hands on this pill and make a breakthrough. With this pill, his chances to get in the heavenly firmament sect would be doubled. A sudden laugh pulled way out of his ruminations. A foundation reforming pill. My Li clan is surely blessed by the heavens. Someone spoke loudly, and Wei squinted to take in the scene unfolding in his room. Three people had entered his small room, and suddenly it felt like they were all chickens stuffed inside a small cage. Wei recognized the trio that had barged into his room. They were his uncles, Li Jia, Li Tang, and Li Ti. They were sons of the current patriarch, Li Shua, his maternal grandfather, and had a tyrannical attitude. They all wore dark blue martial robes, bearing the symbol of the Li clan on their chest. It was an axe, because the Li clan mainly performed woodcutting on their large pieces of land. They had their eyes fixed on the small, bean-sized pill in Li Sua's hand. It was the foundation reforming pill Wei had hidden a few months back. He had found it in an ancient ruin near Old Marshall City, where they lived. For two years, he had hidden it from everyone else, saving it for himself. Originally, when his old self had left Old Marshall City, he'd lost the pill to a group of bandits. Now, Wei used it in a way that would benefit him. Squinting, he watched the trio carefully. The eldest uncle, Li Tang, had a huge body, a monkey face, and a boorish appearance. He looked after the main business. The other brothers, Li Jia and Li Ti, were stationed in other important cities. What were they doing here? He had to stop them from snatching the pill from his father. If they succeeded, his father might vent his frustration on him, killing him in one go. That must not happen. Wei sent a divine transmission to his stepfather. Eat it already, you fool. Li Sua jumped on the spot, looking around. Li Sua, what are you waiting for? Give me the pill, Li Jia said impatiently, taking a step forward. Li Jia, the pill will come to me. Li Tang ferociously pushed his hand in front of Li Jia. What are you looking at? Wei transmitted. I'm the pill spirit, and I've taken a liking to you. It was destined for you, fool. Eat now. If you eat it, you'll gain immense benefits and might even become the next patriarch. Divine transmission was a skill that came when one's divine sense awakened, and for the first few realms of cultivation, it was impossible to know about divine sense or divine transmission. So Wei was sure his stepfather wouldn't know where it came from. A headache overcame him as he used divine transmission, like his body was telling him not to use it. Damn, that bastard was hesitating while looking at the pill. Wei sent another message, venting a bit of the hatred from his heart. Bastard, if you wait any longer, they will snatch me, and then you could only wipe your ass with your empty hands. Li Sua stared at Wei for a moment. Wei sent another message. What are you looking at? That crippled kid? That fool didn't even know what treasure he looted from another fool kid. Don't even think about anything else. 
I, the pill spirit, will squash them once I enter your body. You don't have to worry about anything. As Wei boasted, he could see the hesitation from his stepfather's eyes vanishing. Divine transmission was a soul-to-soul -soul message, so his physical body didn't make a single movement, and that was enough to fool his stepfather. Li Sua once again stared at the pill and then gulped it down. Li Sua! Li Tang, the tallest and oldest son of the patriarch, dashed forward and slapped Li Sua, but the pill had already entered Li Sua's stomach. There was no turning back. You bastard! You defied an order from me, and that means punishment! Li Tang bellowed in rage as he punched Li Sua twice, back to back. Elder Brother Tang, please, stay your hands! Li Ti stepped forward and held Li Tang's hand. Let's arrest him and take him to father. He has betrayed our clan and stole the pill from treasury. Treasury? Li Sua howled, his face grimacing in pain. The pill contained a huge amount of pure qi, and one had to refine it as soon as possible, otherwise it would endanger the user's life. It was mine from the start, and I ate it. Li Ti, let's just kill him. Li Jia howled in rage. He ate my pill, and I must kill him. Elder brother Jia, don't do something that will anger our father. Li Ti once again stepped in. We have to take him back. We can't kill him. We should ask the patriarch to kill him by throwing him in Thousand Hell Valley and making an example of him. Li Ti spoke softly, but his ideas were quite cruel. Li Sua's face turned grim. He opened his eyes and gawked around himself. Senior, please save me. You said you'd help me. Now please come forward and take action and kill these wastrels. Li Jia chuckled, his left eye twitching slightly. You're going to die, and you still dare to call us wastrels? You and your son are wastrels. His gaze jumped to Wei for a moment, and then vanished. Wei snickered in his mind. For an arrogant fellow like Li Jia, a cripple like him was nothing but a fart, so he wouldn't pay attention to him, and that was good. And with them taking his father away, he would be gone and punished heavily. That fit his plan perfectly. At first, Wei didn't want to give his pill to these ants, but he wanted a peaceful period to concentrate on his recovery and body cultivation. And when he spotted this trio nearby, a plan had formed in his mind, and he'd exposed the pill. The pill had a unique scent, and he'd expected it would attract attention from this trio. If he hadn't, then he would have used divine transmission to draw them. His plan would have failed if his stepfather hadn't eaten the pill, but everything went perfectly in the end. Let's take him. Li Tang pulled out a thick rope and wrapped it around Li Sua and dragged him out. Wastrel? Li Jia suddenly raised his leg and stomped it on Wei's abdomen. A sharp pain shot from his stomach, and he felt his whole body convulsing before he lost consciousness. System. Host body is in danger. Activating. Dead young master? Ki Fei hummed a folktale as she passed the back of the Li clan compound. From the time the morning dew appeared on the wildflowers, she had lined up in front of Old Lu's store in Old Marshall City's North Market. She didn't even get to enjoy her morning tea because of this, but she didn't regret it even a little bit. The pink rabbit's broth Old Lu sold was a miraculous regenerative medicine. People even joked that it could regrow an immortal's heart. Jokes aside, she had seen its usefulness when she had suffered a heavy injury, and if it could alleviate a little of the young master's pain, it would be worth the fifty silver coins she'd spent on it. Lost in thought, she kicked a large stone lying in the road and tore her long gray gown. It had nearly cost her whole month's salary, but she was more afraid of the young master's reaction. He liked cleanliness, and he would despise her if she looked like this. Cursing over her carelessness, she first checked the broth she had brought. Thank goodness it hadn't spilled. It still emitted the heavenly fragrance of pink rabbit. 
She licked her lips, remembering the sweet taste of the pink rabbit meat she once ate when she was a kid. It tasted heavenly. With the back of her hand, she checked her face, and thank goodness there was no dirt. After that small blunder, she increased her pace cautiously and headed to the young master's room. In less than ten minutes, she reached the open doorframe of the young master's lone room at the farthest corner of the Lee compound. Seeing the ruined door in the broad daylight, she sighed in her heart. A few months back, old Master Sua had smashed it in pieces after getting angry at the young master. Since then, her stubborn young master had refused to repair it, although he suffered from the rain and cold wind. If he could cultivate, rain and wind wouldn't mean anything to him. But with his mortal body, he couldn't resist the effects of the cold. "'Wait for me to get stronger, young master. I'll help you take revenge for your punishments,' she whispered as she stepped through the open door. "'Young master!' Her heart stopped when she spotted young Master Wei sprawled on the floor in a pool of blood. Master! She dropped the pot and rushed ahead to check on young Master Wei's pulse. Tears streamed from her eyes, and she couldn't focus on his pulse for a few breaths' time. No! She cried when she got no pulse. Her heart sank to the pit of her stomach. Young Master, how could you leave me like this? There was no pulse coming from young Master Wei's body, and she couldn't believe he was no more. This was impossible. Last evening when she fed him chicken soup, he even joked around with her. He'd looked so good in the evening light. His face had even gained back a little of the color he had lost after the fight with that bastard Kang. This must be the old master's doing. That devil of a man always beat the young master for no reason. It must have been him again. She touched her heart. It was in pain, and there was no remedy for this. It only knew revenge. Old Master Sua! She dropped on the young man's chest, wrapping her tiny hands around his neck. I vow to the heavens today that one day I'll get strong and kill you for killing my young master. I don't know if you can kill him or not, but if you don't let me go, I might die right now. A familiar voice shook her soul. Blood Nourishing Powder Li Wei didn't know how much time had passed since Li Jia nearly took his life. When he regained consciousness, the dark had vanished, replaced by sun rays stretching through the whole ridden roof, bringing a refreshing, chilly aroma with them. He was alive or so his throbbing body and the rough ground under his back told him. On top of that, the cold wind brushed against his wounds, sending chills through his body. It had rained the last time he had his eyes open, and the chill still hung in the air. Even his blood smelled cold and icy. A bout of coughing took over his body, and he almost lost his life again. Li Jia's kick had destroyed his abdomen and the meridians nearby it. The last thing he remembered was blood spurting from his mouth and stomach, staining his shirt with red color. At least that bastard didn't hang around and mutilate his corpse. He would have been dead if that had happened. Truly dead. Wait, there was another thing. Something popped in his vision, like an overlay. It was called... System? A headache overtook his brain, and he couldn't remember anything about that mysterious thing but he had a gut feeling that it had saved his life. But was his life completely saved? Sending his divine sense into his body, he checked his condition. A bout of pain shot from his head like someone was splitting it into two parts. What was wrong with him? Why was he getting these headaches? But wait, they only came when he used his divine sense. Suddenly he realized the issue. This was happening because his divine sense carried his experience and intuition along with it, and that was the crux of the issue. If it were only memories, it shouldn't be unstable, but memories differed from experience. Memories could only teach him theories about things, but experience taught him the working of an art or a technique. Although his divine sense was reincarnated with his soul, his current body couldn't support it, he didn't have soul space. 
All his previous life's experience lay inside the divine sense while his memories became merged with his soul. He could feel his divine sense weighing with heavy experience, but it wasn't connected to his soul. It was a kind of a third-party entity for him, and his own divine sense hadn't formed yet. Basically, he was a clean paper with lots of memories and an extra piece of experience that didn't belong to him, but to his previous life. If he wanted to store these experiences, he had to form a soul palace and assimilate this experience in his own divine sense. But how could he form a soul palace at his current realm? The divine sense lived in a soul space formed after a cultivator reached a certain realm. But he was too fragile to have a soul space, or even a hint of a soul space. If he overused his divine sense, it would crumble, and along with it all the experience of his previous life. He couldn't use his divine sense anymore. If it crumbled, he would lose his intuition, and that would be like life without vigor. Ignoring his divine sense for a moment, he assessed his body's condition. The situation was grim. Only ten percent of his blood remained in his body. The meridians around his stomach had been ruptured, and blood still leaked from his gut. But this was good. Really, really, really good. When he decided to choose blood essence body cultivation art, he planned to use his previously injured state to start cultivation. Blood Essence Body Cultivation Art cultivated one body in Blood Essence Body, and the initiation required one to lose as much blood as one could, so the new blood formed with the cultivation art would be vigorous and full of essence. This was a pragmatic art that could leave one careless about one's body. As long as a drop of blood and soul remained, one could regenerate their whole body in the higher realms. Loss of blood, injuries, and regrowing one's limbs would be nothing once a person reached mid-level realms of blood essence body. Of course, it couldn't regenerate one's Danqian, and it wasn't part of one's physical body, but a mysterious entity. Then this was all in the future. Currently, he could only wish to reach foundation realm quickly and gain the first power bestowed by blood essence body. Once he reached foundation realm, he would know the details of that power. Currently, he only had 10% of his initial blood flowing in his body, barely enough to keep him alive. Thanks to his divine sense, he could perfectly gauge his own body's condition. In a normal condition, he would have never achieved this low blood percentage, as he would never dare to exhume his blood to such low levels. When he decided to cultivate blood essence body cultivation art, he'd planned to exhume 51% of his total blood and start cultivating the bare minimum amount required for cultivating the first level. But now, he had achieved a 90% blood loss, and that would be extremely beneficial for his future cultivation. He was about to recite the cultivation method when something dropped near his head and two tiny hands wrapped around his neck, almost crushing him. A sweet fragrance emitted from the owner of those hands, and he knew it was Fay Air. Her body always emitted this unique fragrance, like an ice orchid flower. This fragrance could calm one's mind. But that didn't mean he could indulge in this fragrance for long. With only ten percent of his blood remaining and a mortal body, he would surely die if this assault continued, even for a few more breaths. I vow to the heavens today that one day I'll get strong and kill you for killing my young master. Fay Air's determined voice struck in his mind. This girl was the last tie he had left to this mortal world. She was a servant in his house, but he had never treated her like one. He'd always treated her like a little sister. And no matter what, she always stuck with him in thick and thin. He even paid her salary by earning money himself. Although he could only provide her a bare minimum salary, she stayed with him. I don't know if you can kill him or not. Opening his eyes, he gasped for a breath. But if you don't let me go, I might die right now. Young master, Fea released him in a jiffy and sobbed hard. I thought... She wiped her eyes with the backs of her tiny hands, and then a beautiful smile bloomed on her face. Forget it, as long as you're okay. But this blood... Fea, I'm fine. Tell me, 
Have you reached refinement realm layer one? Thayer nodded, her eyes still misty at the corners. Good. Go to the corner and dig a foot deep, and you will find a money pouch. Thayer arched her brows, her small mouth pouting. Go. I need you to buy me some herbs. He coughed, pain radiating through his nerves with every movement of his throat. It made him realize how fragile a mortal body was. After cultivating to the peak of refinement realm, one would get years added to their life and get rid of common sickness or small injuries that normally happen with every mortal. Unfortunately, most of the people never reached that stage. They remained in the first few levels of refinement realm and gained only small benefits. Only geniuses with silver-grade spirit root or physical root were selected in the sects for cultivation. Others remained at the bottom. They could never reach the apex of the mortal realms. In the path of cultivation, the first stage was called the mortal realm, and it matched with the realm he currently lived in. It contained refinement, foundation, bone baptization, marrow cleansing, boiling blood, and heart blood realm. These realms were further divided into nine layers. Young master, please drink this pink rabbit broth first. It will help you restore your energies. No, get the herbs first, Wei said firmly. Get me blood flower, bone protruding fruit, and red ginseng. These were all low-grade herbs that could be crushed together to form a simple blood-nourishing powder, a common recipe known among commoners. It didn't require any alchemy knowledge or a furnace but it was an excellent lifesaver in tough situations, so many people carried these things with them. Also get a white cicada fruit. These... Thayer's eyelashes fluttered. Young master... She hesitated and looked at the money pouch hanging at her gray dress's waist. They will cost at least ten gold, and the quality will be quite low. I have thirty gold saved in the pouch. Buy three sets... Don't worry about quality. All he cared about was these herbs' blood-replenishing power, and he didn't need a gold-grade herb to replenish his current blood supply. A low-tier bronze-grade herb would do. Like a root, everything else was divided into grades, bronze being the lowest, and then silver, gold, etc. But for herbs and certain things, these grades were further divided into low, middle, and high tiers, all three herbs he'd asked for were low-tier bronze-grade herbs and quite cheap, available even in an outskirt city like Old Marshall City. Although he knew a better recipe that didn't require any alchemy knowledge, those herbs wouldn't be available in this city, nor could he afford them for now. Thayer dug at the corner, and five minutes later she came back with a shabby black pouch. After burying it in the soil for nearly two years— it had already lost its luster and showed signs of decay. Young master, I'll get the herbs you asked for. But why do you want white cicada fruit? That smells horribly, and not part of the blood-nourishing powder. So, the lass had a basic knowledge of alchemy. Good. In this life, he had a goal set for himself. He was going to become an alchemy master. And to do that, he had to visit Alchemy Comprehension Tower first. You'll find out when you bring them back, Wei sneered. Heartblood Fayer walked through the sun-illuminated door and smiled at him with her beautiful blue eyes. Wei heaved a sigh in his heart. She had come back in just two hours— and the way she held her pouch close to her heart gave him assurance that she had gotten all the herbs. He'd been waiting for this and couldn't hold it any more. Taking the risk, he sent his divine sense into his body. As he sent his divine sense through his body, he realized he had lost more blood, and his blood percentage hung around just nine percent. Did you get the white cicada fruit? he asked in a tattered tone. She nodded spreading her lips in a faint smile as she sat next to him. Her body exuded a unique fragrance that calmed him down a little, something he needed badly right now. It reminded him of the time he'd met this lass for the first time. He was badly hurt, lying in the street, and a little girl came forward offering him a fruit she was eating. Her clothes were tattered and her face dirty, and yet she offered the fruit upon seeing his condition. That touched his heart so he recruited her as his servant 
as she wouldn't take money without working for him. Good. That was his only option for survival. But before that, he had to perform a step with her help. Fayer, help me get up. After she left, he had tried to move his hand, but failed as pain took over his consciousness, and he almost lost it. Young master, please let me crush this into a paste and apply it to your wounds. You don't need to get up for that. Fayer put down the herb pouch and brought a stone crusher near him. No, help me get up first. He coughed and his lungs almost jumped out of his throat. All his organs were in turmoil, and if this continued, he might not make it to tomorrow. Fayer gritted her teeth and slid an arm below his back. Her soft touch eased his pain, but he spurted a mouthful of blood out. Water droplets fell on his face, and he spotted Fayer crying silently. Young master, please let me apply the paste first. No, do it. He gritted his teeth and gulped down the next bout of blood trying to jump out of his mouth. After a minute of vicious pain and two mouthfuls of blood, his back rested on the stone wall. The cold penetrated through his tattered shirt and into his back, sending a shiver through his spine. Now, his chest heaved, squeeze the white cicada fruit into a juice and create blood-nourishing powder in another pot. The room swirled around, and he almost lost consciousness again. He couldn't lose it. Not yet. For the next ten minutes, Fayer worked as per his instructions, and two pots, one filled with white juice that smelled spicy, and the second with blood-nourishing powder, were ready in front of him. Bring the juice forward. Stab my heart with a knife and put my heart blood in the juice. Fayer's face twisted, her eyes spanning wide. Young master, what are you asking? Get my heart blood out and pour it into the white cicada fruit juice and then feed me that. Her eyes spanned wider than humanly possible and her face turned grim. Young master, do you want me to kill you? She suddenly slapped herself hard. How can I think like this? Young master, I can't do this. Wei pushed the next bout of blood back in his stomach. Fair, this is the only way for me to survive. Don't worry, I won't die. The white cicada fruit will replenish my blood. Fayer shook her head and stepped back. If you don't do it, then I'll die, he said, and he surely would. His blood level had reached rock bottom, so just the blood replenishing powder wouldn't save him, unless he got a high-tier silver-grade medicine. Nothing else could save him. This was his only choice right now. If 49% of his blood had remained, hell yes, he would go with the blood replenishing powder. But not now. The white cicada fruit had topmost importance to him right now. White cicada fruit was a common fruit and had little use in alchemy. Even commoners discarded it as it smelled horrible. It was known for its dilution property and used by many small sects to dilute heavenly elixirs and poisons. The diluted liquid would have some percentage of the original elixir or poison and could be used in large quantities. White cicada fruit had another version called three-leaf white cicada fruit. It had better properties and could maintain a better percentage of the original liquid's properties, but it was quite costly. White cicada fruit retained 15% of the original liquid's properties, while its big brother retained 30%. Of course, the one Fayer bought was the normal one and would only make the juice keep 12 to 15 percent of his blood's properties. That's why he needed the purest of his blood, and that was in his heart blood. Every human produced a drop of heart blood once in a year, and it was stored in one's heart. It was a super blood drop that contained the power of thousands of blood drops. It wouldn't be useful for common people, but high-level cultivators had many uses for it. Young master, how could you... She sobbed, stepping backward. Fay air, he coughed. Let me show you. Get a small pot and pour a drop of your blood and some white cicada fruit juice in it. Fay air's eyes gleamed and she followed his instructions. When the white juice mixed with the blood, it turned dark red at first. Then the color faded and settled on a faint red. 
It even carried the faint fragrance of orchid. Taste it, and you'll know. Thayer hesitated for a moment, and then drank the juice. It tastes like... Your own blood. I've lost a lot of blood, Thayer, and I need to replenish it. But I need my own blood to do this, Wei replied. But it wasn't entirely true. There was another method. He could use another's blood, too. Blood Essence Body Cultivation Art was a tyrannical art. It lay in the gray area of the righteous and demonic path. One could cultivate it faster by drinking blood from others, but that was a superficial method, and a demonic one, too. Although he didn't believe in being the most righteous guy in the world, he didn't like demonic ways, either. The other way of cultivating blood essence body cultivation art was using one's own blood. One could drain oneself and then regenerate new blood using the cultivation art. Despite being slowest, it brought many benefits. If he had only lost 51% of his blood, he could have stabbed himself and guided the knife using his divine sense to take a drop of his heart blood. But now he had to rely on someone else. And whom could he trust other than Fayer? But, young master, you've already lost so much blood. If I make a mistake, you might die. Fayer, I've lost ninety-one percent of my blood, and there's no other way to gain blood. Don't worry, I know a secret method that will help me replenish my blood using this method. But just do it. It's an order. He hardened his face. But I'm afraid. I'll guide you. After five minutes of hesitation, she pulled a small knife out and put it on his chest. But she shook her head the next moment. No, I can't do it. Fucking do it already! With all his might, he pushed himself forward and let the knife pierce his heart. Pain withered through his fragile body as the metal tip entered his skin first and then muscle. It was excruciating, and he couldn't take it, but he had to. Young master, you... Thayer was about to pull her knife back when he pushed himself to the extreme and grabbed her hand. Do it. This... Thayer closed her eyes, gritted her teeth, and pushed the knife into his chest. Inch by inch, a marker of agony closed on his heart. As he had lost most of his blood already, no blood came out of the wound. That was a good thing, as he didn't want to pollute the heart blood. To your right he cried through his teeth as the knife headed for his ribcage. Thayer sobbed and moved the knife to her right a little. Little more! A loud cry slipped out of his mouth as the knife stabbed in the wall of his heart. He couldn't take it anymore and lost consciousness. Blood Essence Body Layer 1 Li Wei was roaming through the dreamland when cold water splashed over his face, the moment he opened his eyes, a thick speck of sunlight blinded his eyes. His eyes failed to bear even that much sunlight. Things were grim, and even his divine sense seemed to turn dull and hazy. Where? A pair of pretty, moist eyes stared at him in the backdrop of his shabby room that became blurry as he glanced at it. Young master. Fayer grabbed his chin and pushed a small ceramic cold bowl to his lips, I've extracted two drops of your heart blood and made this juice. She sounded hurt. Thanks. He couldn't say any more. All he wanted was to lose himself in the unique orchid fragrance she exuded and sleep for an eternity. No. Li Wei, wake up. You have to do better in this life. A sharp voice came out of his subconscious, thrashing into his mind and obliterating the degenerated thoughts. No, he couldn't lose himself. In this life, he couldn't make the same mistakes. With all his might, he forced himself awake. With half-open eyes that felt like tons of weights were attached to them, he stared at the thick red blood in the white ceramic bowl with a blue dragon painted on it. Inhaling deeply, he smelled the blood. It smelled like nothing. It was his own blood. Every person had a unique smell to their blood and depended on their spirit root attribute. But his spirit root had no attribute, so his blood smelled like nothing. A blank sheet that he was rewriting with his own script. The blank sheet 
would get to the apex. Not the earth-grade physical route, but his blank-sheet bronze spirit route would carry him forward this time. For his own life, he had to remain awake. Pressing his lips on the bull's cold edge, he gulped the first sip of his own blood. It tasted awkward. Blood essence body cultivation art. Initiation. Shouting in his mind, he directed the blood he just drank into his first meridian, the meridian that connected to stomach, Yang Ming Meridian. Blood essence body cultivation art was peculiar in its cultivation method. Unlike the old art he'd practiced, firmament fire body cultivation art, that required him to consume fire-attributed things, blood essence body required him to baptize his own meridians and revive himself. Essence energy he absorbed from nature would revive his meridians at lower levels and bring forth his body's potential. Revive in oneself. Form the ultimate blood constellation, blood above all. It was the first line written on the jade slip he'd obtained in the strange secret realm. Once completed to a certain level, it would pack all the knowledge the body experienced in each drop of blood, allowing one to revive oneself from a single drop. It worked on one principle and disregarded everything else. It formed the ultimate blood constellation, blood above all. Well, he didn't believe in it completely, nor had he the jade slips to cultivate this art to the peak levels. He didn't need them. He only had to reach Foundation Realm to sustain a ray carving using his divine sense and then cultivate Chi. This was a special soul array he had learned in the later part of his previous life. It was different from the array Wang Zia had carved in his Danqian using beast blood. It was far superior to the method Wang Zia had used. But he had to reach Foundation Realm to try that. Right now, his divine sense was weak and flickery, but it might stabilize once he reached Foundation Realm. Even in all professions like alchemy, a rays and artificer's Foundation Realm was the least stage of cultivation one needed to reach before starting one's journey on that path. The first drop of white cicada juice mixed with his blood passed through his throat and entered his Yang Ming meridian. It was a large meridian that connected with thousands of small blood vessels surrounding it. The initiation of blood essence body cultivation art required him to circulate his blood through a certain path along with a specific chant. It was like qi cultivation, where he circulated heaven and earth essence through a special path inside his body. Once initiated, he would be able to absorb heaven and earth's essence energy and store it inside his blood and body. One drop, another drop, and then multiple drops started moving through the blood vessels and reappearing in his Yang Ming meridian. But a strange thing happened. For every one hundred blood drops, only fifty would come out of the connected blood vessels. Thanks to his divine sense, he could watch every blood drop passing through his meridian. They were disappearing in the middle. What was going on? Where did the blood go? Bewildered, he spread his divine sense to the other parts of his body. What he saw left him in shock. Before this, his body was devoid of any blood, like a blood-drained corpse, but the condition was changing. New blood started appearing all over his body. Shiny red blood drops drove through his meridians and blood vessels, rejuvenating them with strong vitality. In comparison, his old blood looked like dog shit. It had a faint black color, while the new blood had dark red vitality. If he compared it to the Foundation Realm in his previous life, it was way better than that. And this was even before he reached the first layer of Refinement Realm. This was a heaven-defying cultivation art. Now he realized why this cultivation art required one to bleed to death and drink another's blood to initiate it. It needed space in the body so it could replenish the blood using this strange phenomenon. It actually multiplied the blood through some means. If one tried recycling one's own blood with 100% blood force, they might explode from too much blood. That made sense. The less blood one had in their body, the better the cultivation art worked. And this new blood had an incomparable vitality when compared to the blood he had. Maybe this was a good thing. With an elated heart, he drank the juice faster, sending it through his Yang Ming meridian. The best part? 
It didn't hurt at all. When he'd cultivated firmament fire body cultivation art, he'd had to put his body through so many hardships. One time he even had to step in an alchemy furnace. A hot, bubbly alchemy furnace. That was more than brutal, and he'd had nightmares for months after that experience. This was much better. Time passed slowly, and he drank the pot full of white cicada fruit juice mixed with his heart blood in six hours. It took six hours, but he felt like only a moment had passed in between, and the result was astonishing. When the last drop of white cicada fruit juice moved out of his Yang Ming meridian, he noticed it had changed color from faint black to a throbbing red. It had gone through the qualitative change. And if he had to measure his blood quantity, he had replenished 60% of his total blood. He felt a lot better. But the initiation wasn't over. Two more steps were needed to complete the initiation. First, to draw out the old blood. And second, to refill the rest of his blood. Suddenly, he felt good about having only 9% old blood remaining in his body. Thanks to his divine sense and the color of the new blood, it was easier to spot the old blood. As he had bled profusely, his body had pushed all the remaining blood to two organs, his brain and heart. That made sense. If any organ had failed, he would have died already. Fayer. He opened his eyes and stared at the little lass sitting next to him with her head on her knees. In the darkness, she looked so sad, and he had an urge to tousle her hair and tell her everything was all right. Young master! Her head snapped up, her eyes teary. I'm fine, but I need you to stab me again, just above my ears and next to my heart. Stab it until it bleeds. Young master! She cupped her small mouth. Don't you see I'm doing better than before? He asked, smiling faintly. Although his wounds hadn't healed, his vitality had undergone a tremendous transformation, and he could force his muscles to act on his will. Fayer scanned him through her beautiful eyes. Yes, but this... Do you want me to do it myself? I'll do it. Bringing the knife up, she first stabbed it in his heart under his guidance, drawing a lot of blood out. It hurt like hell, but his heart was in overdrive, pushing new blood through his Yang Ming meridian and producing new blood everywhere. Brain, no. Out of the 9% old blood, his heart had five and his brain had four remaining. Crying, she stabbed above his right ear and pierced a hole in his brain, rupturing a small meridian. Blood oozed out of his skull, and he felt his consciousness fading in and out. As the blood flew out of his brain... His thought process became muddy, and he stopped sensing things around him. But it lingered only for a few breaths, and soon everything became clear. Clear, unlike before. He had reached the final stage of initiation, and was on the verge of reaching Layer 1 of Body Refinement Realm. Now he could finally absorb Heaven and Earth's essence energy. Danger in an isolated room in the Lee Clan compound, a bloodied man lay on the ground. His clothes were tattered, and various wounds could be seen on his whole body. In all, he was beaten like an animal. Two men entered the room, and one of them kicked the bloodied man as soon as he stepped in. Li Sua, are you still not talking? Don't blame me for not showing mercy to a thief like you. Li Jia punched with his right hand and sent Li Sua's wounded body flying away. Because of this bastard, Li Jia had lost a golden opportunity to step into Layer 5 Foundation Realm. If he had eaten the Foundation Refirming Pill, he would have reached Layer 5 Foundation Realm easily and entered the Heavenly Firmament sect in the next month's recruitment. But this bastard had to eat that pill like a pig. Tell me, how did you steal that pill? His next punch landed on Li Sua's nose, breaking his already bloody nose. But no matter how he hit this bastard, the rage flowing through his heart wouldn't subside. Li Jia, wait. Li Tang entered the room and spoke in a loud voice. A golden talisman lay in his hand, and it emitted a strange, mysterious light. It was a far-distance sound transmission talisman. Li Tang had used it to converse with their father, Li Shua. They were afraid if Li Sua had stolen the pill from the clan's treasury, they would face wrath of their father. 
What did father say? Ligia stopped his kick in midair. The pill is not from the treasury. It seems we underestimated this junior brother of ours. Either he squandered money from our clan, or he obtained it from somewhere else. Li Tang's eyes glittered like a hungry pig. Li Jia turned his head to stare at the blood-laden Li Sua on the ground. That bastard was telling the truth. He got it from somewhere else. But how could he arrange so much money? The Li clan branch in this city only worked in the nearby mountains cutting trees. They could never accumulate this much money. Li Ti handled the accounts, and it was impossible to cheat him. Even Li Jia didn't dare to squander any money from the arm of the business he took care of because of their younger brother. Li Sua, if you tell us the source of the pill, we might let you live. Li Jia stomped his foot on Li Sua's right knee, crushing it a little. You motherfuck! Li Sua cried out in pain. Pill spirit, you betrayed me. Come and help me, else you'll die a horrific death. Li Jia frowned. This bastard kept calling on an unknown pill spirit. Either he had lost his mind, or he was fooling them. Tell us the truth, else I'll put your tendons out and feed them to dogs. Li Jia used his chi to push his leg on Li Sua's knee. A cracking sound came out of Li Sua's leg, and he broke out with another loud cry. This degenerate brother had no shame. He cried like a girl. Oh, let me go, please. I'll tell you the truth. It was my son, Li Wei, who gave me this pill. He stole it from somewhere. Go and ask him, but please spare me. Li Tang's forehead broke out in black lines. Isn't that the kid you killed yesterday? He stared at Li Jia. Li Jia broke out in a cold sweat. If this proved to be true, then he had stepped on a scorpion's tail. Don't worry, he is alive. There is a girl feeding him blood-nourishing powder. Li Ti spoke for the first time. This younger brother of theirs was a silent person, but he had a terrifying degree of perception and a massive information-gathering network. Because of him, their clan business had flourished for the last five years. Fortunately, Li Ti did not aspire to the patriarch position. His goal was to join the alchemy sect of the region, Divine Fragrance Palace, so Li Jia didn't have to fear his extraordinary gifts. Then let's go and capture this kid, Li Tang said. Li Ti, stay here and look after Li Sua. Make sure he doesn't run away. After Li Ti nodded, they stepped out of the room and headed toward the lone cabin at the corner of the Li compound. Evening light passed through the doorframe, illuminating young Master Wei's tranquil face. Kifei changed her position so the bright light wouldn't disturb young Master's sleep. The restless day had passed, bringing hope and peace. It was the most brutal day of her life. Watching her young master waver between life and death had stressed her to the limit. She felt like she had aged ten years at least in a single day. However, it had ended well, and the young master had passed into a calm sleep. His face was devoid of any pain, and what more could she ask? While staring at his peaceful expression, she remembered the strange white cicada fruit juice the young master made for himself. It was a bizarre method she had never heard about. Where did the young master find out about it? Thinking about it, the young master had hidden so many things from her. This weird method, money buried in the ground. The strangest thing, he even knew the path of the knife when she'd stabbed it into his chest. A bout of emotions jumped into her throat when she thought about how she'd stabbed her young master so ruthlessly. When he'd bled, she felt like stabbing herself for the inhuman thing she'd done. But he'd survived, and that was what was important. After he went through all that, his injuries had healed from the inside out, and now only shallow cuts remained. If he wasn't sleeping peacefully, she would have changed his bloody clothes. Seeing those bloody clothes on his fair body made her heart squeeze in fear. Did he lose some fat? She stared at the young master's figure. He looked a little thinner. It must be because of the injuries. Going forward, she must feed him well enough to regain all the fat he'd lost. If he became thin, he wouldn't look handsome anymore. Fair. The young master's eyes popped open, a shade of red and green peeping at her. Wait. 
Why did the young master's eyes become a little red? They were always green. Was he bleeding in his eyes? Go and hide. Whatever happens, don't come out. I'll solve this matter myself. Raising his palm, he patted the back of her hand. Bewildered, she stood. What was going on? She wanted to ask, but instead she moved out of the room and stepped into the darkness. Tracing her palm over the stone wall, she moved behind the home. The fragrance of wet grass haunted her nose when she stepped on it. The area behind the young master's house was covered in weeds. She made a note to clean it up once the young master regained his health. Two figures rushed from the well-lit buildings and headed toward the young master's room. In the dim light coming from a nearby street lantern, she spotted their fierce faces. The heavens are smiling on us. This trash is still alive, one of them exclaimed after entering the room. Kifei clenched her fist. She wanted to dash in and punch that bastard who dared to talk rudely about her young master. But then the young master's words reverberated in her ears. He'd said he would solve it and after seeing him miraculously surviving the brutal ordeal of blood loss and injuries using a weird fruit, she believed him. Uncle Ligia, please forgive this little one for not being able to properly greet you. This little one is injured. The young master's fragile voice drifted out next. Her heart shuddered in fear. Was he injured again? No, that couldn't be. A minute before he had spoken with vigor. Was he pretending? Brett, if you want to live, tell me where you got that pill. Uncle. A long silence prevailed. Okay, this little one will tell you. No, I'll show you, Uncle. I found it accidentally, but this little one was afraid to go in there. There might be more of those heavenly pills. A greedy laugh echoed through the room, and then the two men walked out one carrying the young master over his shoulder. She was about to follow them when a sound echoed in her mind. Dig three feet down in the middle of my room and bring the ring you find to the ancient ruins outside of the city. That voice sounded like her young master, but how could he speak directly into her mind? She didn't understand, but she went back inside five minutes after the men left the room to do his bidding.